Hi, Karina here, your Lucid Living Coach. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I am an intuitive life coach and astrologist, and this is my channel, and I do a lot of astrology and moon cycles. So if you're into astrology and transformation, please subscribe and like my videos, and I will see you on the flip side. So I'm a super dork right now. I'm super freaking tired. It's pretty late on top of the fact that Mars, the planet of drive and motivation has slowed way down. Mars is going retrograde on September 9th, which is my mom's birthday. Yes, I have a Virgo mother, so... I am naturally a little critical and uh, self-judging. That is a very Virgo quality, right? Now, Mars, retrograde September 9th through November 14th. That is a long time. Mars will be retrograde through Scorpio season. Okay, Scorpio's ruler is Mars. So Mars will be closest to Earth. And it will kind of, when something's super close, it's like yelling at you. And when it's super loud, it circuits, right? You can't really hear what the person's saying when someone's yelling at you. Or when an energy is being thrown through some, some uh, tunnel or portal, it could blow the circuit. So that's very similar to a retrograde. So this energy is going to be slowing down. We might lose the drive or... Um, we will find more hurdles and blocks that we have to move through in order to make shit happen because Mars is the removal of barriers as well. Another thing that I noticed is Mars will be retrograde during the next Mercury retrograde. The next Mercury retrograde will be in the sign of Scorpio because it is in the water signs this year of 2020. We're rethinking the, the deep depths of emotions this year. Cancer is a water sign, which is our home. Um, Scorpio is uh, the hidden and the taboo and the transformation into the new world and Pisces is the unconscious and the death aspect of returning to uh, unity and um, our connection with our higher self. So with that being said, this Mars retrograde is a time uh, when we will be slowing down. Sorry. I'm going to get back to my notes because I'm super tired. Um, so the last Mars retrograde was 2018. It was June 27th through August 28th. Now Mars goes retrograde every couple years. So the last time it was retrograde, it was in Aquarius and it, retrograded into Capricorn towards the end. All while, we also had three eclipses. We had one in Cancer, which is our home, one in Aquarius, which is uh, humanity and the future, the new world, and Leo, which is our, our courage and our individuality. Mars retrogrades um, is a time of reflection, reassessing and rethinking our ego desires, 
we're learning a lot more about our ego. Now, the Mars retrograde is in its home sign of Aries. Now, we have not seen this since 1988. It's been a while. The next Mars retrograde after this year will be October of 2022 and 2023. And that will be in the sign of Gemini, which that is our North Node this year. So we will be re-looking at a lot of this, um, this balance between the masculine and feminine. Okay. So looks like October 14th will be Mars opposed the sun. So there will be this conf this conflict, um, this balance that needs to happen between our self-awareness and how our ego and masculine drive plays into that. So M Mars, what is Mars? Mars is uh, um, pursuing self-preservation, self-determined action. It is our drive, motivation, it's removal barriers. And it's in the home sign of Aries, which is growing self-awareness and confidence through asserting your will into the world. And this is slowing down. So it's not gonna be as prominent in our lives for the next couple months. So where it was in 2018, we're strengthening our connection with humanity and looking at working as a unit in community with less ego. And I remember we were really strengthening our own inner child desires and what sets us apart from the collective. Remember, we were working with what our strengths are and to strengthen those strengths so as a unit, as humanity, we can be stronger together, right? So we were working on that in 2018. I'll also looking at where our ego has gotten the way of our manifestation into the new world. So we were innovating the new ideas for what we wanted to manifest in our lives that aligns more with our higher self and our divine purpose that we wanted to build as far as our legacy in the new world, because we knew that it was around the corner, right? There was like this buildup in 2018 of like, I know what I want. We were, we were awakened to our purpose and we knew that we needed to start working on that. We were in the awakening process and so these two years later, this now Mars retrograde in Aries is giving us the, the, the fuel and the momentum to assert and implement these things that we built and work. And we've been working on it, right? The last couple of years. However, this retrograde, including the Mars square, Saturn, we are being asked to go with the flow and not force anything to understand that is the process of our evolution. Um, to kind of uh, let let go and receive, because when the when Mars and our masculine slows down, our feminine is now stronger, and feminine is about receptivity and receiving the gifts or receiving our karma or good karma or the things that we've really been working hard for and towards. Now, I also notice during this Mars retrograde, it will be retrograding back and meeting up with Black Moon Lilith. 
Now, Black Moon Lilith is, is the point furthest from the moon's orbit around Earth. Lilith and Mars will be dancing with each other during most of his retrograde. Lilith is... Lilith usually stays in a sign for about nine months, and it just happens, God stands, where Mars is retrograde during this area of the sky where Lilith is. This is for a reason, okay? Mars is having a conversation with Lilith. Lilith is the more uh, hidden aspects of self. It's the more primitive aspects of self and the desires that are the rawest, in rawest form. If you were to be stripped of the conditioning and your upbringing in society, you would have Lilith that more darker aspect of the feminine energy. It's not about nurturing and caring for, for, for others, um, like a mother would, like a, a, the moon, but it's the furthest point where you're, you're caring for your own needs um, without thinking about anyone else or what they are saying or what they would say or judge you about, right? So if, if you were desire, let's just say, for example, you were to desire some, someone outside of your cultural norm, okay? Maybe you were raised in a culture that says you have to marry within the same culture or the same religion to pass on this, uh, this tradition. And the Lilith aspect of you actually desired um, someone outside of that norm, that would be your raw um, desire, okay? That's a Lilith. So if you disregard because of the need to seek approval of your parents' culture or society, however, Lilith brings a rebellious, raw, and authentic nature into the realm of our drive and desires. So during this, this Mars retrograde, the taboo nature of being will be brought into our awareness and we may want to act on those desires and through that experience, or if we don't act on it, just the revelation or the revealing of these like hidden desires of Lilith, we will feel like healed from its exposure from the unknown into the known. We might realize that we want what we want and regardless of what our family or society says. This could be even our, our ego's desires to dominate. Okay, that's very uh, Mars and Lilith hanging out together. But um, that was what I wanted to, uh, that's really what stood out to me during this Mars retrograde. And I wanted to, yeah, I think I touched base on everything. So just making sure that your Martian Aries energy is balanced because this could be uh, definitely some frustration. Um, this is not being able to get exactly what we desire and we want right away. And, um, you know, it, this is about being self-aware and like, this is about like asserting yourself, um, instead of being aggressive, like you could either be right. You could either be aggressive or, um, you could be assertive and assertive is a more balanced energy of Aries. And then you want to steer away from being like the overly emphasized Aries, which is this selfish, um, 
serving, aggressive, impatient, overbearing, or steering away from the underemphasized, which would be um, passive and uh, fearful or victimized or like self-denying of your true desire. So you definitely want to find a balance between these these two um, Aries energy because Mars, this planet of like drive and passion and motivation is, is not, it's not getting that energy that it needs. So making sure that we're taking care of ourselves in that way. Um, because the opposite of Aries is Libra, which is that balance and that harmony and, um, you know, really being motivated by others and what they want and what, you know, they think. And so in this um, retrograde, it's going to be opposite. We're going to be more, more uh, self-aware. And I think it's going to bring up a lot of awareness within ourselves as, as, as long, as far as like our, our, um, our hidden desires and our uh, hidden nature. Uh, also, Lilith to me is a very twin flame type energy um, that Lilith in the Garden of Eden, you know, Lilith is Adam's equal. And um, sometimes it's hard to be with an equal uh, because uh, they don't really, one doesn't need one, uh, and the uh, the other isn't seeking to dominate or can't dominate uh, a twin because you guys are equal. Um, that's when Adam had asked God to uh, make him Eve, which he made out of Adam's rib. So he was... Uh, she was more of a subpar uh, human and therefore would be easily dominated and controlled. So Lilith is that, that, uh, that very um, self-sufficient, strong feminine energy um, that is more of an equal of Mars and you know, we can find ourselves wanting that equal or wanting that challenge or um, wanting that balance between our masculine and our feminine energy within. So I hope that's helpful. Um, and yeah, so the launch of the Mars uh, rover mission was July 30th, 2020. So the plans to land on Mars, we have for February of 2021. So that's kind of exciting. February would be most likely Aquarius um, season, which is about the revolution. It's about like new inventions, new findings, new future stuff, right? So I'm excited for that because once we get a little more information about the this Mars Martian energy, maybe we could be humbled a little bit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I am going to get my butt to bed because this Mars is definitely taking a toll. I just want to just lay in my hammock and relax. So I think I will do a little bit of that tomorrow morning. But for now, peace out. And if you're interested in coaching or a, a reading, you can contact me. You can go to my website, www.lucidlivingmovement.com. Also, if you would like to support me, I have a break free to stand in your power, which I am a co-author in that book. And it will be arriving my new shipments on the 
14th or 15th of this month. So if you'd like to put in an order, you can go to the link below Venmo at Lucid Living Coach and um, you can Venmo $20 and just put book and I will make sure that I will save you a copy. All right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful week and Virgo season and um, stay motivated and stay awake and stay aware and stay safe. All right, peace out. Your Lucid Living Coach, Karina.